So this is the uh, the start. This is where it all begins. This is where it all begins, Swanee. What what actually happens is when a tree is felled, it's then split into what we call clefts, which is like a um, it's like a, a wedge cake, of cheese. Really. Yeah. Um, but obviously, we only need that centre bit there to make into the bat, and then they, they, they cut from that into what we call a blade. And this is a grade one, really nice tight grains very straight with just perhaps a little hint of colour on the outside edge. Oh, so this could end up in my bag one day. This would be a very good bat, I think. Brilliant. Yes, I think you get a lot of run to that one. <laughs> okay, Swanee, so when, when we decide we need to put some bats through the manufacturing process, they come through out of the yard into the dehumidifier. Uh, it takes about 17 or 18 days to get down to the right moisture content. Right, so they come outside, they're nice and cold in the yard, they come here and warm up, ready, yeah. ready to be made into a new bat. That's extremely important because the moisture content is vital to making a good bat. So it's, it's firstly resilient, but as light as possible as well. Let's have a look. Okay, so we're in the kill now. How many bats have you got? It seems like there's thousands. Well, this, this holds three and a half thousand blades. I in, each, in each go. And how yes. long will they be in, in this kiln for? Uh, 18 to 21 days, depending on the moisture content level when they first come in. Right. So, Peter, I've noticed these yellow wires um, sticking out of one of these clefts. Um, what are they for? What they do is we, we put these into the end of the cleft. To, keep track of the moisture content. This thing uh, goes, is red on the outside panel that we saw earlier, and that'll tell us when this batch is ready. There's, there's four different blades scattered around at different places so that we can be sure that each cleft is down to the right moisture content before we turn the kiln off. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, great. Well, yeah. So is it just whatever you need at the time, or do you do, say, the pros bats, right, we'll put them in now, boys bats tomorrow, or in three weeks' time? Well, they go in here according to what we need to make. So three and a half thousand blades will work out what the, the right proportion is for each type of blade. And then when it goes from here, it'll be graded. And if it's a really good blade, it'll go into one of your bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so we've come in from the, the dehumidifier straight into this machine here. Yes, this is called the molder. The molder. And the purpose of this is to take the cleft uh, the blade from out, out of the uh, dehumidifier and make it into a consistent shape so when it goes to machining it starts at exactly the right place and gives the right shape. Right. So that's that's the initial blade and as you can see when it's been through the dehumidifier it's quite, rough. Can, it's quite rough and you, and, you, and you can't see the grain that well. So when it's been through here it's, it's much more uh, consistent in shape because some of the blades are, are not quite um, uniform. This makes them uniform and as you can see, you can see the grains are much easier it starts the to colour. Look, it starts yeah. to look a lot more like a, an actual cricket bat now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very nice. So we've left the moulding room and now I've entered the... Grading room. Grading room. Yeah, each batch of wood comes through into here and the bat maker looks at each individual piece to determine how good he thinks that piece of wood is. Let's, let's take this one for an example. You can see it looks that, very good to me. Well, it is, isn't it? It's a pretty exceptional piece of wood, actually. There must be 15 grains on there across the face, all evenly spaced, so that'll, be, that'll play particularly well. What um, the grader will also do is just determine which end the handle should be. Okay. Obviously, the handle end doesn't hit the ball very much, or at least it shouldn't do. So the, the important bit is to get the best bit of the, the wood in the driving area, as you can see here, I don't know whether you can just see that the yes, it scoops off. It, it, it's slightly bent at the top here, so the handle will go that end. So down at the bottom, it's dead straight. And how far off the, the finished size and shape and article is this cleft now? Well, that feels feel it, that feels a pretty reasonably light piece of wood. Yeah. Um, I guess that's about um, somewhere three, three and a half to four pounds in weight. Um, it'll lose half that weight in the wood by the time it's shaped, let's just double check it on the scales. 
Yeah, there we are. Three, three pounds ten. Spot on. So, w- when the handle's in it, rubber grip, stickered, that'll be about two pounds ten ounces, which will have a uh, for a good size bat that'll p- pick up really well. I like that one then. I think you should. Okay, Swanee, so once we've graded the clefts, it comes into here. Now, the most important thing is to make sure that the moisture content is consistent in this room all through the year. So that if if a piece of wood comes in here and is here for, say, three, four, five, six months, it doesn't deteriorate. It doesn't become too dry or it doesn't pick up too much moisture. So everything in this room is quality control, basically, the the moisture level. As you can see, there's no windows, it's, it's well insulated. Um, here we have the panel that's very similar to the one uh, in the big dehumidifier, and there's a small dehumidifying plant here that, ex- that um, either sends out warm air or cold air, depending on whether the temperature needs to go up. We try and keep the humidity at about 55% and the temperature uh, up to around about 20, 20 degrees. It's, it's, but what happens is if if the air becomes too dry, there's, um, you can see just up there, there's a um, hot air unit that will throw out steam and the fan there will circulate it. Right. So it'll, it'll make the, the, the whole uh, building more humid. More right? humid. Yeah. yeah. So one of the other major part of the bat, of course, is the handle. And it's just as important that we uh, keep the moisture content of the handle stable as it is the blade. Yeah. Um, as you realise, when the handle goes into the blade, it's cut and spliced into it. Right. Now, if this, say, was 20% moisture content and the blade is between 8 and 10 where it should be, then this will shrink in time and cause problems on the glue bond. Okay. So it's imp- just as important that this is at between 8 and 10% as the blade. And it's made out of the same kind of wood? No, this is made out of cane. Um, it's spliced with, with three rubber strips to take ab- absorption of shock. Um, cane is a very good medium for making a handle because it'll stretch in two directionally. Uh, I'm sure you've seen shots of yourself on Sky where the... Uh, it sort of wobbles, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And there's a lot of movement at the, at the splice area. So it's very, very important that uh, in mani- the manufacturing process that that is very carefully taken care of. Well, Swanee, that's the um, first part of the manufacturing process. This is really what we've shown you so far is the processes involved in getting all the substrates, you know, the willow and the cane and the handle into the, the right condition to make fantastic bats. We're now going to go through and see the manufacturing process and David is just going to come in and take you through the processes of manufacturing. Here's David. Hey, David. Hey, David. Hey, David. Hey, David.